Yeah. I know we just signed a deal, but I need my advance on the next one too. They know I'm gonna be on. Yeah. I need it. Get your boom and want some more. Cause I got a really big team and they need some really big rings. They need some really nice things. Better be coming with no strings. Better be coming with Welcome, no welcome to the first Mad Dog Mike and the Chief podcast. We're coming to you out of straight out of Charlotte, North Carolina. I am the Chief, aka Sam Harley, and my co-host here is Hey man, uh, I'm gonna need my advance on the next one. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mad Dog Mike, uh, aka Mike Drains, coming out of uh, you know, straight out of South Jersey, representing the E A G L E S Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> well, you already see where Mad Dog Mike is coming from and where we're about to go. But just to give you a little info on what we're doing here, we just want to give you a take on local and national sports. We're going to speak to you here for the next hour. Talk about some things, some big things in sports locally and nationally. Um, as the Mad Dog has already alluded to, we're going to jump into this Super Bowl discussion we're on the eve of the Super Bowl, and that was part of the reason why we came into the Big Rings joint from uh, Drake and Future, because in over a little over 24 hours, mm -hmm. uh, somebody's going to be rocking some Big Rings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's either going to be the New England Patriots or the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, now, for all intents and purposes, to keep everything clear, you know, I'm a Carolina Panthers fan, born and raised <laughs> in Charlotte, North Carolina. And Mad Dog, tell them who you rock with before we get into this Super Bowl discussion. Well, you know, like I said earlier, I'm originally from South Jersey, so I will, uh, you know, root for, you know, uh, the Eagles uh, growing up uh, not too far out of Philadelphia. But um, I am originally a Broncos fan, but, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk about that in another podcast or something. You know. <laughs> yeah, South Jersey and the Broncos. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you had, you're definitely going to have to explain that one. But I will but be rooting for the Eagles for this Super Bowl. I'll be rooting for them. Keep definitely, going. definitely. Actually, I'll be rooting for the Eagles as well. Uh, part of that is, you know, the Panthers came into – existence in 1995 you know by that time I was already I was a teenager I was already into football so uh, I was a big Randall Cunningham fan so I followed the Eagles you know until the Panthers came into fruition so uh you know and I know there's some there's probably some people out there in podcast land that might have some type of problem with that that's fine whatever but I'm a rock with the hometown team all day every day so you know when the Panthers came into existence I was all about the Panthers but I would like to see the Eagles knock the uh, dastardly Patriots <laughs> dastardly, <yeah. laughs> off their throne, you know, definitely. Uh, so but we're going to have a little discussion about that this afternoon, um, just talking about this, this Super Bowl and the Patriots, uh, you know, you being, uh, you know, rooting for the hometown team, rooting for the Eagles in this Super Bowl. Uh, what, have your, what are, just, what are your, some of your initial thoughts about the matchup? Uh, well, I think it's it's going to be a, a good game. I think it's going to be a, a very uh, a defensive game. I am a realist about um, how I'm going to be analyzing uh, um, the the game, uh, but I think uh, the Eagles uh, the Eagles front is going to get at Tom Brady early. I think that's going to be really key. Uh, they rotate seven guys in and out, so they should be nice and fresh. Uh, so I think it's very important uh, to get pressure on the Brady man early and often. I definitely agree with that. Um, the Eagles have a, a great front seven. Well, actually, defensive line. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. they they have. Uh, I think I, I would say they have above average linebackers. I, I don't think they have elite linebackers, but mm -hmm. their front four is definitely elite with Fletcher Cox, and that's always the thing with Brady. Uh, you know, actually, the Panthers did beat them in Foxborough this year. And one of the things you have to do with him is you have to get pressure in his face. Right. Um, I mean, pressure around the end is good, but. I mean, his footwork, and he knows how to navigate the pocket. So what you have to do is take his airspace in front of him. He doesn't like that. Like, you know, he gets real irritated. Um, you know, it, 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 it throws him off to get that pressure right in his face. So I definitely agree with you uh, that the Eagles have to get pressure uh, on him in order to throw him off his marks. And, you know, because their offense is so much based on timing. Mm -hmm. um, 
They do have Brandon Cooks, but you know, over if you look at the Patriots over the course of the season, I mean, they didn't really have too many explosive plays that stand out. I mean, they pretty much and I'm going to say this is going to be kind of like a negative connotation with it. I don't really mean it to be negative, but I mean they didn't conduct down the field. Right. I mean, that's what they do. You know what I'm saying? Like they like I said they do have Brandon Cooks. I mean, they do try to get him the ball and I mean and, and take advantage of his speed, but for the most part, you know, they're hitting Gronkowski down the middle. They're hitting uh Amendola and um uh, I believe uh it's uh Chris I want to say Rogers, but I know that's no, not no, that's, that's not. Uh, uh, but they they have another yeah um, they have a they have another slot receiver that they hit and they use all the time. Um, so that's that's pretty much how they get down the field. So you know, in order to disrupt that timing, you have to get pressure in his face around the ends as well, but definitely in his face. That that really seems to uh, you know throw him off the timing and his mark. So yeah, definitely definitely have to do that. I really believe that outside of the quarterback position, however, that the talent here on both of these teams is pretty much even. I mean, you know, certain positions you may have a little uh, more talent here and there, but uh, the biggest disparity, I would say, would be at the quarterback position. And that's just because – and, that, and and that's not necessarily a slight on Nick Foles. It's just that he hasn't really had any experience in this situation, mm -hmm, you know. Mm -hmm. He's played very well in the last two games, especially the last game against Minnesota. But, I mean, you can't discount the experience. You know, Tom Brady has won, what, four Super Bowls and lost two. I mean, he's countless games in the uh, playoffs. I think they have, what, six – uh, AFC championship mm -hmm. trophies now or AFC championship uh, wins. Um, so, I mean, you can't discount that. But outside of that, I mean, I really feel like, you know, either that it's 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 the talent level is the same or maybe even the talent, le the talent level may be kind of tilted to the Eagles' favor. Um, even on the offensive end, I feel like uh, the, the, the Eagles' uh, wide receivers – are a little bit more explosive. Um, and, I mean, really, the, the Patriots haven't used the running back much. Um, you know, they started out with Gillisley at the beginning of the season. He kind of fell out of favor with the coaching staff. So they have been using Deion Lewis. But I think, what, did Brady throw the ball 60 times or, like, in the high 50s in the game uh, against the Jaguars? Right. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, they're not even really running the ball. Maybe they try to get back to that in the Super Bowl. But – uh, you know, I feel like the Eagles have a very good chance to win. Um, you know, I feel like it's an issue. The the issue will be the Patriots' mystique. That's what I, that's what I feel like it is. Uh, just just to, like even last year against the Falcons, uh, the Falcons were up. I really believe that after the Patriots scored that first touchdown, they were kind of like, oh, you know, we've seen this team come back. We've seen Brady come back multiple times. Like it started you know, put in doubt in their mind. You can't right, play right. like you that. You know the storyline. Yeah, I mean, yeah. But, I mean, you're up 28-3. to three. You're dominating. You're, it, it's a reason why you're doing that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I feel like there's going to be some point in the game where either you're going to go out and win the game or you're going to let the Patriots back in or let the Patriots win the game just because you're intimidated by what they've done in the past, which really has nothing to do with you being out on the field in that moment. Mm -hmm. um, so... You know, we talked about, and I talked about the quarterbacks a little bit, the quarterback uh, disparity, and that might be the wrong word because I'm not trying to, again, be negative against Nick Foles. He's played, you know, he's played really well. But I will. Uh, <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, I mean, do, do you think Nick Foles can lead the Eagles to a champion, to a, uh, to a Super Bowl championship, a Super Bowl win? Well, you know, I, I think um, I think uh, Nick Foles is a, is a decent quarterback. Uh, I'm not going to uh, – you know, go too hard on them. But uh, just Nick Foles and lead in the same sentence is just – it just doesn't sit well with me. Uh, I think he's going to manage the game very well. I think, like I said, I'm going to go back to the defense. I think the defense on both sides are going to be uh, – it's going to be a defensive game. Um, I think that, uh, you know, the, the coaching scheme of the defenses are, are, are going to determine uh, this game. Uh, you know, uh, Nick Foles, he's a game manager. And that's exactly what he's going to do. You know, I know he had a, a a great game two weeks ago against the Vikings where he exploded. Uh, but you know, I, I I just don't see him uh, doing that this time. 
especially in the Super Bowl in this big stage. Um, you know, uh, I know that the the Patriots defense does not scare anybody, uh, but like I said, I'll go back to the scheme of the coaches. I think that will determine uh, the, the will be a big factor uh, in this game. Even though you made a good point, the, the Eagles uh, talent wise, except for in the quarterback position, uh, I think they outmatch uh, the Patriots on both sides, running back, you know, wide receivers, uh, and, and and you know, each position of the defense. But um, I just feel that the um, the coaching scheme is going to uh, uh, you know have a big effect in this game more than people may realize. I agree. I agree. I mean, I mean, no, no one can deny the uh, you know uh, the coaching prowess of Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I mean, I, I, that's definitely going to play a major role. I mean, I, I feel like with Nick Foles. It's just interesting because we've never seen him again in this position, kind of as you alluded to in, uh, in your answer. Um, usually in this type of situation, there's one of two things that happen. Either the player steps up, right, you know, right, and has right. like a, just a great, wonderful game, or they shrink in the moment. So and, and we don't really know how he's going to react to the moment, mm -hmm. so I guess we'll just have to see tomorrow – you know, how he reacts to the moment. I don't think he's going to have a bad game, you know, uh, you know, but I just don't think that he's going to have an explosive. I think he's going to go back to being that game manager, uh, dink and dunk type player. Uh, he has a big arm. And he's, he, I'm sure he's going to try to go with some deep balls. Uh, but, you know, uh, you know, I just don't see a, a, a huge scoring game in this one. No, I, 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 and that's very, I mean, in, in my opinion, that's great analysis. Um, and, you know, that would just bring me to my next question. And, you know, you, you're saying, you know, you're letting me know that or letting us know that you don't really see um, a high scoring game. Right. So who's your pick in this game? Who's my pick in who's, this game? Who's your pick? Like I said, I am rooting for uh, the Eagles, uh, the hometown. But, uh, you know, I am a realist. I am a realist. Uh, so, you know, uh, I think the, the Pats are, are going to pull this one out. Uh, uh, to be more specific, I think they're actually going to – that score is going to be 24 to 20. Uh, the Pats are going to uh, take down the Eagles uh, with Nick Foles throwing an incomplete pass to Alshon Jeffrey. <laughs> Wow, uh, specifics. I like it. With zero seconds left on the clock, I he's like going to throw it. it in the goal line. They're going to have him double covered. And uh, he's going. Nick Foles is going to lead him downfield, but he's going to be unable to seal the deal with zero seconds left on the clock. Wow, specifics. I love it. I love it. Now, I'm not that specific, <laughs> but I'm going to go the other way because I've said all those things, you know, about the Patriots, which are all true. However, mm -hmm, however. you know, it, it has to end at some time. The law, you know, the law of averages says, you know, and they've lost two. Six but rings. It, it has to end at some time. Rings. And, um, you know, I, I think, uh, I, I think it, I think it ends tomorrow. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think it ends tomorrow. Cause I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll expand even further on that. But first, I'll give you my pick, which is, I say Eagles 27-24. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I think, I think, it will end tomorrow. And I also think that starting next year, you'll see a steady decline of the Patriots. Um, you know, they already, in my opinion, and this is another subject for another day, but I'll just throw it out there. They already made, I believe, a, a, a big mistake in trading Jimmy Garoppolo, you know, because I feel like they're the owner, the Patriots, um, you know, his heartstrings are tying to Tom Brady because he's done so much. But, you know, all these reports that we've heard, you know, in the past month or so about, you know, people taking credit for the wins and the, the reports around trading Garoppolo. I think Belichick, you know, Belichick has always been that guy to, like, get rid of a guy. But, but he gets a, a year before they start to decline, you know. And I'm thinking that, you know, he was trying to – there was a reason why Robert Kraft wanted to get rid of Jimmy Garoppolo, you know. I feel like maybe – Bill, Bill, you know, and of course, you know, I'm looking from the outside in. I don't have any inside information, but, you know, I feel like Belichick was starting to try to make moves 
you know, because he's kind of, you know, everybody's saying Tom Brady is playing great. I mean, yeah, I'm going to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. I'm listening. I had Tom Brady as my uh, fantasy quarterback okay. this year, okay. which I did win my league. I won my league. Okay. However, though, I've had Tom Brady in the past, and he didn't do as much. Like, right, points-wise, right, right. I mean, like, you know, there were some games I was like, bro, what are you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I mean, just purely from a statistical standpoint, like, I, I, I think the decline is coming quicker than people – say that it is. All these people saying he can play till 40, he can play till 45. I don't think so. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that he will um I'm not I'm not saying that they won't win their division. They mm -hmm. won't go to the playoffs, mm -hmm. you know, but I think there's going to be some incremental decline in Brady starting next year cuz I've seen, I, just by following him by fan, you know, through fantasy football and the statistics. Mm -hmm. I mean, in my opinion, he didn't have as great as a year as everybody is saying he is because I've seen him have better years, you know, much better years. So so let me just get some uh, clarity on what you're saying. Are, are you saying that, uh, you know, that Tom Brady, uh, that Bill Belichick wanted to get rid of Tom Brady? Not necessarily get rid of him. What I'm saying is – and crafts and crafts. So, so I'm, I, I guess I'm kind of asking. You're saying that 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 craft is more with Brady than with Belichick. Well, n I'm not necessarily in a general sense, mm -hmm. but I feel like not. And, and again, because that whole transition with it when it happens, because it is going to happen. This guy can't play right. forever. Right, right, right. It's going to have to he be. He said he's going to play until he's 51. Though. Yeah, that's not happening. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. You know, I don't care how many, um, you know, uh, Facebook, YouTube features he comes out with, you right, know, right, about right. his health. He's not playing until he's 51. Of course, of course. But, <laughs> no, I just kind of feel like that the reason why all of that was being talked about is that I feel like Belichick was starting to make moves to head in that direction. Not necessarily say we got to get rid of him in the offseason. So Belichick was with Garoppolo. He wanted to keep Garoppolo. Yeah, yeah, I, I feel like that. I mean, you know, he's never going to come out there and say that in public. But, yeah, I mean, because there was reports that came out that Robert Kraft was like, you know, if it's Brady or Garoppolo, it's Brady. Like, get rid of Garoppolo. And right. that was the reason why they traded him. And that's why some people are speculating that, you know, maybe not – after this year, but, you know, at some point when Belichick sees the the major decline, he's going to be like, yo, I'm out of here. Mm. Like, and you're stuck with Brady, and you figure out. Because they just tra they traded away their, their, like, every, I mean, from all the reports, everyone was saying that this guy was a star, Garoppolo. And, I mean, he did when he started playing. When he played, yeah. When he, he played, did, when with he played the, well. The, what, they, they, they won all of their games? Or just They won all of them except for one? Maybe they lost one? Mm-hmm. I mean, and now they have Brian Hoare as their backup. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, you're gonna well, hand the. I mean, again. Well, I, they were I, gonna have to pay Garoppolo too, or franchise. Yeah, yeah. I, that know, that so was that's coming basically up. Basically, saying that you know either Tom Brady has to go, you know, or Garoppolo has to go. Basically, and they made that decision. Yeah. yeah. Um, well. You know, uh, you know. I think, uh, from my understanding, you know, uh, you know, Kraft is all about Belichick. And Brady's kind of, you know, just, you know, um, you know, he's just a quarterback. You know, he, he doesn't have too much say. But I do hear that there is a lot of tension between Belichick and Brady as far as power struggle and things that's going on, trying to get in Kraft's favor. So, um, you know, I don't know too much about, you know, uh, I think I think I do. What I will say is that, you know, uh, getting rid of Garoppolo was, as you can see, was not a good move. It's not a good move. Brady's what? Uh, he's he's late he, in his years. Yeah, he's what, 40. 40? Oh, is he over 40? I thought he was 40. He's he's 40. For, okay, okay, yeah. Now, uh, see, and, and that's my thing. Like, okay, so he's 40. Like, you had Garoppolo there. He's been seasoned. So, I mean, I guess basically they are basically kind of betting, though, that he'll play for at least two years, maybe three, because that's about as how long as you're going to need to groom another quarterback because right. Brian Hoyer is not going to do it. I mean, I, I, I can see Brady playing another two, three years. I, 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 I can see him playing another uh, two, three years. Uh, 
I don't, I don't think that'll be uh, too much of a problem with him. Well, I mean, that's the bet that they made. It's yeah. going to be interesting moving forward to see how that bet works out. I mean, they're not them. ready to give up the throne. So it, it, they had to pick between Garopp, Garoppolo and Brady. Yeah. Uh, that's what it seemed like it came down to. It was a must thing because they would have had to franchise Garoppolo and pay him a lot more money. Yeah. yeah. Or get rid of Brady, <laughs> yeah. which, what they, which they weren't going to do. They're yeah. not ready to give up the throne. Yeah. And they're they're you know they're not going to give up the throne they're 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 not going to just give it away easily so they're they're playing for it now and you know let the the future uh, hold as it is. I will say this though, yeah, like I'm not a Patriots fan, I'm not a follower, but listen, yeah, but I hate listen, the Patriots, but, but, so you know, but listen, if they were to cut Tom Brady in the off season, that would have been gangster. Like I, I might have started root just just. Yeah. No, nah, that's not. Gonna <laughs> that would no, it's not gonna happen. It's but happen. I would have been like, whoa, that that's that would have been. That's their guy. That's it their it guy. is, it is, it is. That is their guy. So, and they proved that. They proved that by getting rid of Garoppolo. Absolutely. But like they I got said, rid they, of him for cheap. So I I really don't understand uh, that story. Uh, but they just gave him away basically. That's a whole different story. So let's yeah, go. we'll see. I mean, listen, the cliff drop. Can be. I know it's it's usually not as bad for quarterbacks, but I mean he is forty, and sometimes with athletes they can just fall off a cliff. Yeah, you know? you've seen that. Yeah, you've I mean regardless that. of what you try to do, I mean he can have all these medical gurus. I'm not mm-hmm. saying it's going to happen, mm-hmm. but I mean once it leaves, it's gone. So if you're not prepared for that transition, then it's not going to matter whether you're not ready to give up the throne or not. It's going to be given up. But you know, but that's that's like you said, that's the bet that they made, though. Yeah, I'm, I, you know, I I'm, I don't like uh, the Patriots. I'm not really big on Tom Brady, but I am a realist. Uh, I think he does play another at least uh, strong two more years, uh, and I think they uh, maybe three, and I think they may win a couple more titles, man. Well, I'll just be honest. Yeah, no, well, I mean, at, at the and, level, and then they got time to, you know, they're going to go on the draft. They're going to find a kid. You know, they got rid of Brissett too. They yeah, had two they decent did. quarterbacks, you yeah, know. They uh, did. So they're yeah. re- they're showing uh, they're showing Brady, they're showing the team that they're not really concerned uh, about uh, Brady's health. But as you said before, I think there was some pullback on Belichick's behalf uh, for them getting rid of uh, Garoppolo. I can see that. I yeah. Can see that. Well, I mean, we'll see. Like I said, they made their bet. Um, you have. Patriots 24-20, am I correct? 24 to 20 to Patriots. I have Eagles, E A G L E S. <laughs> Eagles 27-24. Eagles, man, I love you guys, man. You know, I love my, you know, the Eagles fans are diehard fans, you know. Philadelphia fans are really diehard. They don't play no games. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys may hate me for it, but um, you know, if you are listening, uh, I apologize. Yeah, mad dog. Don't apologize, man. I mean, you know, you picked the Patriots. I right. mean, you just, you just hey, you just going. But I'm rooting. To... I'm rooting for the Eagles. <laughs> I'll be rooting for you. I'll have my my Eagles hat on. Listen, you don't have to own that, brother. <laughs> you don't have to own that. You picked the Patriots. Uh... <laughs> but since we are talking about NFL football and we are broadcasting here from Charlotte, North Carolina, we have to talk about the Carolina Panthers. I mean, really, to be honest with you, we could do a whole podcast. On the Panthers themselves, but we don't have that kind of that that type of um, type of time. Right. But we've got to talk about the Panthers. I want to start off with the hiring of Norv Turner as the offensive coordinator. First of all, let me just say that um, I, I am glad it was time to change offensive coordinators. You know, it was time for Mike Shula to go. I mean, he had done a pretty good job, mm-hmm. but. You know, it, it was time for him to go. Um, I'm happy about the Norv Turner uh, hiring. I'll get into that in a moment, but I want to get your thoughts on it. Um, I think it's great. I think it's a good move, uh, Norv Turner. He has a track record of, uh, you know, uh, getting offenses going. Uh, one of the things that I, I, I think that he said, uh, which is encouraging, is that he his top priority is he's going to be working on Cam Newton, Newton with his accuracy. Uh, you know, uh, I think Cam Newton is a beast, uh, but I think one of his biggest weaknesses, and everybody knows, is his accuracy. Uh, so uh, that's exciting to hear. Uh, and the wide receivers, he actually he's, he likes these uh, young wide receivers. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people talk about, you know, uh, 
the Panthers wide receivers uh, not being as strong. Uh, but I think they're, they have a lot of talent and speed. And I think uh, North Turner is uh, going to do very well with these wide receivers. Well, yeah, I definitely like to hire. I mean, because at this point, I mean, Cam has been to the Super Bowl. He's also uh, been the NFL MVP. So, like, you can't just bring in somebody and be like, yeah, he's the offensive coordinator that, like, Cam won't respect. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because there, he's at a level – He's been at a level in his career where, like, you can't just bring anybody in. So, Norv Turner, you know, he's worked with Troy Aikman, worked with Phillip Rivers, mm -hmm. you know, um, and then he's in, even has some experience with more mobile quarterbacks with Teddy Bridgewater in Minnesota. Right, right. So, and I mean – Teddy Bridgewater it, actually had a really good year when uh, Norv Turner was working. Definitely. So, I mean, I, I feel like it's a good hire because he'll respect – uh, you know, North Turner. Mm -hmm, yeah. uh, and I believe North Turner, he was the OC when the Cowboys won some of those championships, right? Right, right. Yeah, so, I mean, he has a Super Bowl ring. I mean, because at the end of the day with the offensive coordinator, it's really on Cam. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, Cam can – he can take the coaching or he, do, he really doesn't have to. He just go out there and do what he wants to do. I mean, it's not like he's going anywhere. I mean, that's not a really good attitude, but, I mean, he could, I mean, he could possibly do that. Mm -hmm. So – Bring in someone that has won a Super Bowl, has worked with top flight quarterbacks. Um, I mean, I think it's a great hire. His, I mean, the offense that they run, the offense that they run now came from uh, Norv Turner mm -hmm. because right. when Ron Rivera first came over, Rob Chizinski was the tight ends coach. He brought Norv Turner's offense over, and then he added a lot of the stuff in from Auburn, the, the read option things mm -hmm. that – Cam was good at it. Right. He was used to. Right. So basically, they're running a version of his offense anyway. So it's not going to be like a big change. Um, it's someone who Cam should respect. Um, and you know, he talked about the young receivers, but he also talked about the fact that they need to get more playmakers in the wide receiver position. Mm -hmm. So. Again, with him being successful and being an older coach, like, you know, if he goes to Marty Herney, who's the GM right now, we'll talk about the GM situation right. too, and says, hey, like, we need to go out and get a wide receiver, like a, a veteran wide receiver. Because as, when you look at drafting wide receivers, I mean, unless they're the elite, like, top five, top ten pick, usually it takes about wide receivers two to three years to, like, come into their own, you know, like when you're drafting them. Mm -hmm. So we need somebody now because we're trying to get to the Super Bowl. Like Cam is, what, 28? Mm -hmm. You know, Olsen's on the back end of his. And he's still great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not. That's not a knock. But he's in his early 30s. He's on the back end of his career. Um, you know, Luke Keekley is still in his prime. But, like, we're wasting years, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. As a Panthers fan, we're, you know, well, not last year. Um, you know, things happen. I mean, we had some playmakers some young guys, but they got hurt. I mean, Curtis Samuel got hurt. We really don't know what, what, what we're, what we're going to get out of him. Um, Demir Bird, he was actually coming on. I was really excited about what he was doing, but, you know, he got hurt one time. He broke his arm, and then he got hurt near the end of the season, and they just had the IR. I mean, if you go back and look at the wide receivers we had playing in that game against the Saints, man, it was, it was rough. Right, right. I mean, we had Devin Funches, he, but I think he had a, a knee issue and mm -hmm. a shoulder issue. Mm -hmm. Mose Frazier, we called somebody, a guy up from the practice squad to play. You know, Britton Burson, the guy that, you know, the Winthrop guy that gets cut every season and they bring him back because we always need an extra wide receiver. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, you're not going to win any playoff games with that type of wide receiver core. So I feel like North Turner has the clout to say, hey, like, we need to go out and get a wide receiver. Like, we need a, we need an alpha Somebody just played before, like the E. I mean, they the just to go back to our Super Bowl conversation. Alshon Jeffrey. Alshon Jeffrey. I mean, they signed him long term now, but they, he signed like a one year, like seven million dollar contract or something like that. Anybody could have had that guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I mean, we I know our philosophy as the Panthers is to draft and grow guys into your system, but I mean, when you're talking about Super Bowl windows and like elite quarterbacks, elite linebackers, and like trying to win the Super Bowl, sometimes you have to like step out of your box. You know, you know, Martavis Bryant is out there. I know he's had the 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 suspension Go get him. issues. Go get him. Yeah, I Go mean, get him. 
like that guy's a player. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And and you put it on your coaching staff and your culture of your team to like bring that guy in and you know, make him work for you. Mm -hmm. But I think uh, you know, you know, I think uh the wide receiver uh position is very important. You make some really good points, but I think we're forgetting about the imp I f the impact that North Turner will have on Christian McCaffrey. Um, cuz as you know, uh he helped develop Darren Sproles uh in the Chargers when they had he LT did. and Michael Turner. Um and you know, Christian McCaffrey is that type of player and could be possibly even more. I mean, he can run run routes, uh he can run the ball. He can uh, pretty much do a lot. Um, I think that North Turner is going to be able to use, uh, you know, McCaffrey uh, really well. Um, I know he had a a, a good rookie season. Um, you know, hopefully he uh, he doesn't have that sophomore slump. Uh, but I, I don't think, think so. No, nah, I, I think, think so. Uh, I think uh, he's he's going to have a, a major impact uh, uh, on the Panthers next year with North Turner uh, running that offense. Well, no, that's a great point, um, and that ju that just that just brings me to another point about North Turner and Mike Shula. I just don't think Mike Shula was imaginative enough mm -hmm. as an mm -hmm. offensive coordinator. Mm -hmm. I mean, they got they got McCaffrey the ball a lot of times, mm -hmm. but I agree with you. I think moving forward next year and beyond, I think we're going to see McCaffrey in a lot of different positions. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of different type of plays and things done. Now, don't get me wrong. Like Mike Shula had, a, he had a lot of different little uh, plays and and quirks and things that were nice, especially around the goal line. But all together, like especially this year, and I know there were some other things that happened as well. Like you know, Cam couldn't really uh, train because he was you know coming back from the yeah, shoulder injury yeah, and some injury. other things. But I mean, sometimes things just get stale, and it's time to move on. So, But North Turner, he's been sitting home for a year, and he's actually been watching a lot of the Panthers. He was actually, you know, uh, those were one of his teams that he, he was watching. So yeah. he's been sitting home, <laughs> relaxing, plotting on, you know, how he can utilize this kid. Definitely, definitely. So I, I think it's a great hire. I know a lot of the fans around here, they were kind of like, uh, you know – we don't yeah, know North move, Turner. They kind of they kind of looked at his his record the past few years. I mean, one year he was coaching in Cleveland. I mean, that was when Rob Chaczynski, mm -hmm. uh, Chaczynski, excuse mm -hmm. me, was their coach. But I mean, it's Cleveland, right? Number one. <laughs> um, you know, his record was kind of up and down with Minnesota. But I think if you look at his overall record, and then again, you have to look at where Cam is. Like, you can't just bring in like they can't call me and be like, yo, like. We want you to be our offensive coordinator. Like I walk in there and Cam is gonna be like, "Yo, who are you? You know, <laughs> what have you? Like you have to bring you somebody. Chief? Yeah, <laughs> I'm the chief. I'm no. chief. I'm the chief. What's up? <laughs> but now nah, you have to bring in. Seriously, you have to bring in somebody with some clout, man, and he's gonna right. respect. Right. Like, it's, you right. know what I'm saying? That's just like uh, I'll, I'll make another example. I mean, it's just like uh, one of our NFC. East rivals, like, I mean, East, I'm sorry, South rivals. Like, you can't just bring in anybody to be Matt Ryan's mm -hmm. offensive coordinator. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, they kind of did with Sarkeesian. I don't know how he felt about that, but that's, you know, that's another story. But, I mean, with, with these guys that have, these quarterbacks that have experienced, uh, experienced success, like, you can't just bring in, like, you know, Joe Blow to be the offensive coordinator because it, it's not going to work out. Because if they get there and then – they start giving them things to do or plays or whatever, and it doesn't work out. And then the respect level is not there. Like, it's going to be bad. North Turner has the track record. He has the resume, and he doesn't play favorites. So, you know, um, I think it, it's a good move. It will work out. Definitely, definitely. Well, just to quickly go over a couple of the other uh, – a couple of the other coaching moves that the Panthers have made. Um, interesting – uh, well, Eric Washington, who was the defensive line coach, was promoted to defensive coordinator. Okay. I mean, I think that's a great move. Um, the defensive line has always been great. Now, a few years back, back in the 03, when 03 we went to Super Bowl, and all the way up until the end of the Greg Hardy era, era um, the defensive line was great because of the ends. 
Now it's more because of the tackles. Mm -hmm. We have great tackles. I mean, outside of Julius Peppers, I mean, mm -hmm. he's a beast. I mean, not, nothing that nothing need, nothing else needs to be said about JP. I mean, he's what uh, like thirty nine or something like yeah. that. And had eleven sacks this year. But that's always been a strong point. And again, people have to remember that Ron Rivera is a defensive minded coach. So at the end of the day, like it's going to be his defense. Like he's not going to just let these guys get out here and like do whatever they want to do. You know what I'm saying? To a certain extent he will. I mean, I know he wants to empower them, but you're not just going to get out there and like just go out of the box of what his defensive philosophy is. So, I mean, as long as Rivera's there, I feel like, you know, we'll easily have a top 10 defense. Um, and the other hire that was interesting to me was uh, Brady Hoke was hired <laughs> – <laughs> I'm sorry. My bad, my bad, my bad. No, hey, hey, I want you to, hey, you, you need to speak hey, how you feel, I, I, you, you know? know? I, I just, so, what, I, I, I mean, you actually had a okay, reaction to okay. that, so how well, do you feel? Well, uh, let me go back to, the, before I, I, I get on hook, let me go back to uh, Washington. You know, uh, I think that is a great move. You know, he's already has a connection with the team. Uh, the, the team loves him, uh, and he brings great energy uh, and intensity, you know. Um, and actually, uh, he's the reason that uh, Julius Peppers came back uh, to work with him. Uh, hey, so, you I know, love him uh, for that. I, I think that's an A-plus move. I think uh, 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 Washington is a beast. Um, Hoke, you know, I'm not going to, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know too much about Hoke. I know, I know that he had his best years when he was in Michigan. Um, uh, you know, as a head coach, he, you know, he had a subpar, subpar uh, record. Uh, but, you know, um, you know, I know in, in Tennessee they're saying that he, he's a likable guy, but, you know, I think he's going to have to prove himself. Well, um, I mean, I think it's a good hire. I, I think one of the things that Ron Rivera has learned over the years is on a coaching staff to surround yourself with, guys with head coaching experience. Okay, right. And actually, Brady Hoke had a winning record as the Michigan coach. Right. No, and, he had and, his best years in Michigan. Yeah, and, and actually, right now, he has more wins against Ohio State and uh, Michigan State than uh, Harbaugh does right now. You know, right, so right. and there's been some grumblings. We're not going to really yeah, get in college football Harbaugh. today, but, you know, there's been some grumblings about, you know, that, that Michigan alums and Michigan fans are kind of, you know, they're, they're kind of irritated and aggravated a little bit that, you know, it seems like Harbaugh can't beat Ohio State mm -hmm. or Michigan State. So, um, I mean, and he's just the D-line coach. I mean, it's not like he's a defensive coordinator. Um, he's been a head coach, so, like, he knows what goes along with all of that. Um, I mean, it's a it's a decent name. People know who he, people know who he is, so – I mean, I, I, you know, I, I think it's a pretty good hire. We'll just um, wait and see. We'll just wait and see that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it all depends. Um, you know, like you said, it's a wait and see thing. I think it's a good hire. Um, but speaking of hiring, um, again, the Panthers, <laughs> Panthers are all over the map. Making some moves. Yeah, man. All, it's going to be a lot of hiring yeah. done down, uh, at, at, at Bank of America Stadium. Mm -hmm. Um we spoke about Marty Herney earlier. He's the interim GM right now. However, they started last week interviewing candidates mm -hmm. for the general manager position. Now, the consensus around here is in this area is that basically Marty Herney will keep the job. Um, now, he's supposed to be interviewed as well. Right. He's, uh, the, he's the top choice right now. Um, they've hired three candidates so far. Um, one is Lake Dawson. They interviewed. They interviewed. I'm, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Right. Interview. Right, interview. right, right, right. Uh, they've interviewed three candidates so far. One is Lake Dawson. He was the Buffalo Bills assistant coach scouting director. Uh, Jimmy Ray the third, who is the Houston Texans. Jimmy Ray. Jimmy Ray. That sounds like a brother. <laughs> <laughs> and you're correct. <laughs> Jimmy Ray the third, which is uh, he's the Houston Texans assistant GM. And then Martin Mayhew, who is the – he was the uh, Lions' former general So manager. they did interview Mark Mayhew. They did interview okay. Martin Mayhew. Okay. Yes, he was the – I believe that was just this week. I think the other two were interviewed last week. Right, right, okay. Um, uh, some people thought it was kind of early for the GM uh, interviews uh, because re really right now um, 
Marty Herney's contract runs through June, runs through the draft. Mm -hmm. But, you know, two of the, as you alluded to, two of these candidates are African-American, Jimmy Ray III and Lake Dawson, and then Martin yeah. Mayhew is, uh, is not. He's uh, of Caucasian descent. I like um, how you said that. <laughs> <laughs> I like how you said that. Well, you know, we try to, you know, we try to keep it above board here. You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, so I don't know, man. I don't know. It, 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 well, you know, tell them how you because we kind of discussed a little this a little bit uh, about this a little bit off air. So you know, we did, we uh, did. Well, well, you know, you know and and this is just not my thoughts, but mm -hmm. it's kind of other people's thoughts as well. That the search has kind of started early. Um, it's kind of hanging out there that Marty Herney will probably retain the job. So it's kind of a thought out here. And this is just not, this is just not with the Panthers, but with other teams as well. Are they just interviewing these African-American candidates to get around the Rooney rule? And let me just explain the Rooney rule quickly. Uh, the Rooney rule is named after uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers owner. Um, and basically, the rule is that a minority can for executive positions, minority candidate, at least one minority candidate has to be interviewed. Um, so they've interviewed two. There's been situations in the past with other teams where people have basically thought that they just brought an African American guy in to interview him. They already kind of knew who they wanted to hire, but they just brought him in to just kind of circumvent that rule. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know. Um, you know, Jerry Richardson has said that he's stepped back from, you know, the day-to-day -day activities and decisions. I mean, how much of that is true, we really don't know. Um, I don't know. It it, it, it kind of, you know, it, it kind of smells to me a little bit. It really does. <sighs> it smells kind of funny. It <laughs> smells kind of funny. Uh, that's, that's, that's pretty much as deep as I'm going to go into that. Uh, I mean... Uh, it is what it is, you know. Uh, uh, you know, we don't, we're, we're not um, inside the house, so uh, we don't know what it smells like. But uh, from the outside, <laughs> from the outside. Uh, but I, you know, um, uh, you know, Herney's there. Um, you know, I don't know. There's, there, there's a reason why he got fired in the first place. Um, uh, but you know, he's in there. Uh, they're doing interviews. Uh, you know, I know Jimmy Ray has a good track record. He's also from, from Fayetteville, North oh, Carolina. Oh, wow. Wow, okay. Yep. He's Teach me something today. Yep, I didn't even know that. Fayetteville, North Carolina. So, you know, uh, I, I, I think he has a – I would like to see him in there, um, but who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, I just wanted to put that out there. You know, it, it's so much going on with this team right now. So much is in flux. Um you know, it's it's just it's just a lot going on with this team. Um, and I, I mentioned Jerry Richardson earlier. Um, you know, the reason why he had to step back was because um, you know he's been accused of uh, workplace misconduct, uh, sexual harassment. You know, it, it's funny. Yeah, there's a lot of that it, going on. Man. Yeah, there's a lot of that going hey, on. Shh, man, the the Me Too movement, man, is serious. I'm just too. gonna leave it at that. It's 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 serious. Um, <laughs> it has a lot of men trying to think back in their heads, like, <laughs> yo, what did I do like 20, 25 years ago, bro? Like, I'm not. I am, mean, hey, am I good? You know, hey, like, man, what did I do yesterday? It, oh, well, yesterday, but <laughs> yesterday is not what's getting in trouble right now. Right, right. Yeah, it's like 15, 20 years, man. I mean, like it. It's it's cats that are going down, going down big time. Yeah. So you know, and it, it's just funny to me. Like they keep the. I guess the you know not to upset anyone. I'm gonna put this in my air quotations. What you got you. Work workplace misconduct. Workplace misconduct. I mean, it's sexual harassment. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then you know they they down and again the workplace misconduct is a blanket for the you know, the, the racism that some of the people have uh, encountered within that building as well. Ah, so they put you know, it, it wasn't umbrella. just sexual harassment. Ah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, I, I won't, I'm, I'm just going to throw that out there. That's the reason why he stepped back. Right. Um, 
we'll, we can go into that specifically in the Panthers in that building and some of the other issues Jerry Richardson is Richard, – because that's not the only issue right. that Richardson has had. Right. You know, he had some issues before he even bought the team with the Denny's franchise. Right. You know, so, I mean, a lot of these people acting like, well, you know, if the allegations are true, you heard that silence, right? Uh, if the allegations are true. Yeah. I mean, if you had to pay out money – 20 years ago for it, and the same type of things are going on. Mm-hmm. I mean, you Track know, but, but I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Stick with it. So he had to step back mm-hmm. because of sexual harassment, uh, uh, racial or racism type issues, racial insensitivity issues. You know, I, I, um, I got to use those words, man. <laughs> You got to use your they, words. Yeah, man. I mean, but they change it up, you know. Uh, oh, of course, to, of uh, course. But you know, let's not, you know, let's, uh, you know. Uh, but I, I wanted to touch on quickly, <laughs> um, you know, another situation that's in the news as far as sports is concerned, and that's Larry Nasser. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kiwi um, Herman type looking dude. Oh man, yeah, yeah. Um, poster boy for some of the things he. Well, I was I was about to say accused, but actually he's been convicted. Man, he looks like uh, he just. <laughs> I mean, I'm not laughing, you know. Uh, you no, know, no, uh, it's very it's, no. It's we very understand. serious, but you know, you know, I try to find, you know, um, you know, just uh, ways to uh, to address this. Just the way that I, I address these. Definitely. But uh, he just looks like uh, he's a dirty, dirty man. Dirty, dirty old, old man. man. Dirty yeah. old man. So he's he he was convicted. I'm not trying to be prejudiced or anything. Oh no, no. I mean, an old man is an old man. Yeah. You know, um, he and especially a dirty old man. Yeah. Um, and it seems like we increasingly well, have a well, lot more of those. Yeah, I mean, it, it's getting out of it's get it, it's getting out of hand. Uh, but you know, he he called himself the uh, the body whisper. Wow, really? I, I didn't self proclaimed body whisperer. That's I, what he called himself. I didn't even know that. Yes. Wow. So so he has been convicted of uh you know basically doing a horrible, you know, he he was supposed to be a doctor. Yeah. Um doing horrible things, sexually abusing uh the USA gymnasts team. on the yep. USA mm-hmm. gymnastics team. It's been a big story. It's been breaking all over the internet uh if you haven't heard about it by now. He was also um uh, you know, abused student athletes, uh, female student athletes at Michigan State. 265, 260 oh, women. Wow. Yeah, 260, 265 uh, women. But this is my girls, point. girls too. Yeah, Girl, girls. Oh. You know, young girls. Yeah. This, Sorry, this I is cut you this. Off. Oh no, no, no. You're fine. This is my question. So okay, so he got his 40 to 175 years, which you know, um, and the judge was. I used to use this word again, gangster. She said, I just signed your death warrant. Yeah. 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 You're not getting out of there, brother. Yeah. Um, but we've seen all of these administrative mm-hmm. personnel mm-hmm. step down from Michigan State because of this. So the president of Michigan State stepped down and the entire board of directors resigned. And I think some people from USA Gymnastics stepped down as oof, well. Oof. But my thing is, yeah, great, you stepped down, you should have, but my question to you, Mad Dog, is should these people, some, if not all, be facing jail time and face court as well? Absolutely, absolutely. But, uh, you know, we, you know, we know how the game is played sometimes. Uh, You know, money talks. Uh, But here's the thing, there were allegations before in 2004 in 2014 of some of these women that you know some of these women that already accused him years ago but they just did not take them serious they did not listen so that's on them and by them resigning by them stepping down that's showing that's showing a lot of of guilt and I'm sure there's things out there that they know. There's obviously things out there that they know about that they covered up or they tried to shut these women up. And, you know, it's just it's going to come back and bite them. But I mean, as far as them uh, going to, uh, yeah, they'll probably face a judge. Uh, but them getting locked up, uh, I mean, uh, true justice would say yes. 
but in the society that we live in today, um, uh, I don't see that happening. My response is, it, number one, it's really sad. Yeah. It's really <laughs> sad because some of these women, before this whole situation, had stepped up and l let people know, as you were talking about, what was going on, and they were silenced, either by just people not doing anything or people not believing them. I mean, it's just really sad because, I mean, there's been, I believe, at least two suicides linked to the actions that this doctor underwent. Right, right. Um, yeah. And it, you know, but, you know, you were talking about justice. I feel like, and, and this will be my last point, and then we'll move on to something a little lighter, but I just want to make this as a point. The only way you're going to get people to stop doing things and to stop perpetuating uh, old, you know, uh, old types of, well, you know, this, you know, this, this man, he's powerful. The only way that you stop that is punishing people. I mean, it's stepping down from a job where you're going to just get another job yeah, anyway. Just, right, right. That's not punishment. That's not. Like, once you start putting people in jail, you know, maybe when the situation arises again and a young lady or a young man comes to you and says, well, this is going on, and you have the choice to either report it or try to cover it up or do this, that, and the third, you'll think about a college president, an AD that got locked up for five to seven years because they didn't do what they were supposed to do. You know, but when you're in these positions of power and nothing happens to you, then, I mean, what's there to change anything? They should have let, uh, I don't know if you saw one of the uh, uh, accusers um, fathered. It was three girls that uh, Nasser abused. And the father was in the courtroom, and he was asking the judge, you know, let me have five minutes with him. Let me have one minute with him, you know, to yeah. give him the business. Yeah. Uh, and, then he, and then he rushed him. Yeah, and I he, heard about yeah. that. I heard so, about um, that. So, you know, that's probably, that's, that's true justice right there. Yeah. That's true justice, yeah. uh, per se. Um, but uh, he, uh, he was uh, originally charged with contempt in court, but they uh, released him due to his circumstances. Oh, uh, okay. You know, okay. so he didn't face. I mean, I don't blame but, uh, him. I yeah, don't blame yeah, him. No, I but, don't blame him either. When it comes he, to your kids, it, it's it's an emotional, uh, it's an emotional uh, thing for any parent, I'm sure. Yeah, but I mean, you know, I've never been in that situation. Mm -hmm. um, hopefully, I'll never be in that situation. But I would just say he he approached that a little wrong. Um, he should just not say nothing. And just rush them. <laughs> I mean, that's what you want to do. Like, you right. can't ask the judge and then rush them. Like, because that's what they're waiting for you to do. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Like, bro, like, prepared. I mean, if you're going to rush them, rush them. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't ask the judge, like, you know, because the judge is going to say no. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. I mean, not, I mean, he probably had a lot of emotions. I'm not picking right, right, on right. Him at Well, all. The, the, the thing was, he, you know, uh, you know, I don't know if it, it didn't seem, and the judge, understood that it wasn't planned or anything. There were some things that they read that he didn't know about. Oh, And okay. he got, it got, yeah. it got to him. And he had to sit there and listen and to him. And he had to sit there and oh listen to him. So when it was his time to speak, you know, he was already, yeah. you know, he, he was, was, he was caught off he guard. He was ready. So he was, he was, yeah, he was ready to go. He was ready. He was ready to go. Whew, well, I mean, I just hope just to wrap that part of, wrap this part of the discussion up. I mean, I, I just hope that he's not just the fall guy because there was a lot of things structurally in place right. to keep him protected. Doing yeah, yeah to protect dude, him. He, he, I see what you're saying. I see, yeah, there's a like, way that he was able to do that. And he was enabled. Right, I mean, the, there was right, a, a whole yeah. structure in place right. to enable wow. him, not, not, not just in two different organizations, in USA Gymnastics and at Michigan, Michigan State. State. So, like, you know... I watch Intervention. I think it's a good show. I mean, the counselors will tell you all the time, like, the enablers are just as bad as the addicts themselves. Oh, definitely. definitely. Yeah. So, like, you know, either these people need to get help, or in this case, if if you're not a part of it, but you're enabling this man, and there's been these reports and all these different reports, and you're not doing anything about it, then you should be punished yeah, I'm outside sure. of losing your job. And then you resign. So it's not even like losing your, you're just stepping down right. of, of your own volition. Right. Yeah. I'm sure there's so many people involved in this man, probably more than, 
than we can imagine. It's horrible, man. It's, it's horrible. Like, it's like a cult. It's like a cult. It really is. It re- I'm, and I'm thinking in my head, like, so like, what is he saying to these people or doing for these people or doing, you know, doing to these people just to like back him up so hard on this type of stuff? You know what I'm saying? But it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah. But to kind of move on to a lighter topic, man, moving back to Charlotte sports, let's talk about the Hornets. Let's talk about the Hornets, man. <laughs> talk about the Hornets. They, I uh, believe, right now are 22 and 29. Oh, I hate saying that. Yeah. They're um, on a two-game winning streak. They are on a two-game winning streak. Um, two games ago against Atlanta, Kimba had 41. Oof. And No, was that 41 last night? No. It was 39 against Atlanta, and he hit nine threes. Mm-hmm. Um, last night, they played Indiana, and he had 41. Um Kimba's doing his thing, man. This team, He's doing what he, he this team, for. I you know, they've just been so disappointing this year, man. Hopefully, they can turn it around before the end of the season and and get a playoff spot that's not the or whatever the playoff spot is to play Cleveland. Hopefully, they don't get that spot true, because true it'll, it'll either be one or two. You know, I, I'm assuming at this point, I, Cleveland seems like they're imploding, but that always seems to happen. But yeah, they'll, it, it, they'll, they'll they'll get they'll it together, up. you know, at the end. Right. But um, so thir- four, 30, 39 and 41 back to back games, and just a week and a half ago, they were talking about trading Kimba. Right. Um, you know, uh, Kimba, he's the, he's he's the guy on that team. Um, you know, I, I heard that. Uh, Michael jo- Jordan has, uh, since since they s- originally started, you know, talking about uh, trading him, has um, recanted that he's talking, he's saying he doesn't want to trade him. Yeah. Um, but they got they got some issues. Uh, they got some salary cap issues too. Um, you know, um, I don't know the numbers off the top of my head, but you know, you're paying Dwight Howard. I think the the three big the three contracts that are really hurting them is Marvin Williams, Dwight Howard, and Nick Batum. Uh, they gotta you find left a one way. out. Uh, who, who? Kid Gilchrist. <laughs> he needs. To go. I know how you feel about. He kid. needs to go. But go ahead. I'm of sorry. Course. I, I, I you, 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 it, it touched me somewhere <laughs> that you didn't put his name. My, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Of like course. you know. Of course. Yeah. Like uh, because I mean. I don't really think Marvin's contract is that bad. We'll we'll get we'll get into. I think you to go I think, I think Marvin is a, a good role player. Um, you know, uh, for being a veteran role player, um, his contract's not bad. But I think he, he's uh, for what the Hornets are trying to do. I think if they were, are they still talking about trading Kimba or or, or not? Well, basically, from what I gather from what Jordan said was, I mean, they would have to get an all-star back. Right, right. And But I don't think they're – because the trade deadline is the 8th, which is just a few days away. Right. Um, but So I don't think it's going to happen. No, I, I, I don't think it's going to happen. And his contract's up next year after 2019. That's the problem. Yeah. Well, well see, that's another issue is that they're going to have to give him a max contract. I mean, if they want to keep him, you know. Um and he's what twenty nine, you know, and he's a six one guard. So right. do you want to invest? A lot of issues. Do, going it is. On, it is. Do you want to? Do you? But I mean, I'm looking at it right now, man. It's like Kemba is the Hornets. Right. I mean, he's the Hornets. Like, if we had Kemba, if we didn't have Kemba, man. Right. Like that team may have may what we have what twenty two wins now, maybe seven wins, mm-hmm. eight wins. But in return, you're gonna have. You're gonna have to get a player, an all-star type player. Yeah, like 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 a trade that we're about to talk about in a few minutes, like a Blake Griffin type player. Okay. I okay. mean, and, and but I think the reason why it's gonna be so hard for him to be traded though right. is not only they're not the Hornets are not just gonna do a one for one trade for right. an all-star. It's gonna have to have throw. They, they, he well no, that one of those contracts is gonna have to go out with Kimba too. That's what I'm saying. It's gonna uh, have to be a throw in. Yeah, like a Marvin yeah, Williams. yeah. I think a, a Kimba Marvin Williams deal. Is attractive because Marvin Williams. You know, I'm talking a lot about him. We're supposed to be talking about Kimba, but uh, you know, I think out of those four guys that we mentioned, I think he will probably be the best trade off with Kimba because he's a power forward. He's a role player, power forward that can stretch the floor and, and, and shoot threes. Yeah. Well, uh, no, I agree. I agree. Um, in his contract, he's making 15 million a year. 
Okay, that's which that's, yeah, that's what I'm that's saying. Like a role play in 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 so today's NBA. I it was more. Yeah, no, no. In today's NBA, fifteen minutes. Kimba's making twelve. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that that's the reason why like his con- I mean, that is con- con- but for a role player at Mark Williams' age, that's 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 I mean, that's that's a lot. Well, I mean, MKG is making like I believe he's making thirteen or fourteen. Yeah, like it's okay. ridiculous okay. how much money he makes for what he does. But that's yeah. a, I could do a whole podcast on MKG myself. So let's he, get back to Kimbo before he, you. Well, 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 but no, but but all of this ties into Kimbo because right. they're not going. The Hornets won't trade Kimbo by himself. Like you're either going to take Batum's contract, which that's probably not going to happen. Um, because he just signed that contract. He's getting, what is it, like five years, 120 million or something mm-hmm. like that. It would either be what well, what the reports were was that in combination with Kimba, who they're really trying to trade, they really don't really want to get rid of Kimba. Right. But there is Batum, Marvin Williams, mm-hmm. MKG, mm-hmm. or um it was one other guy. Um it was a fourth person. Batum, Marvin Williams, MKG. Not Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard. Dwight Howard. Yeah. Um, but again, I mean, yeah, Dwight makes a lot of money, but I mean, Dwight's been balling this year. He's been doing good. I mean, yeah. he's average. I mean, he's, he's averaging a double double. Like, yeah. like he has, you know, all, yeah, he's definitely playing better than he did last year in Atlanta, and I, I would say he's playing better than he played the last couple of years in Houston. I mean, I don't think Dwight Howard's the problem. Like, no. when you play, and, and I knew this was going to be an issue when they signed Dwight Howard. You cannot start. Dwight Howard and MKG mm. on the same team, mm. man. You can't do it. I'm sorry. Like I'm gonna get a. I'm. 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 I'm, I'm getting a little riled up here. True like Hornets you are early right here. Two Hornets fan right here. Yeah, you can't. They can't shoot. Like I mean, Dwight. He he takes a couple of jump shots every now and then, but that's not his game. And M- take, MKG can't shoot. Right. He can't shoot at all. <laughs> Like his his At he's all. taking he's At taking all. like less than fifteen three pointers this year because he can't shoot threes. Right. You know what I'm saying? And he his three shoot. point percentage is like in the twenties. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now he's a defense. He's a defensive. Yeah, guy. but but if you're gonna play Dwight Howard and you wanna play one in four out, you gotta have four guys that can shoot three pointers. True. True. That's crazy to me. So I don't understand it. He's a liability. But who's gonna want him? Who's, there's a the only team that would want get kill, get killed. Gilchrist in with the mix is probably a championship caliber team yep. who doesn't who doesn't need and he a wouldn't lot start. of shooters. He come off the bench. He come off the bench. He'd because be a role player. He should not be starting. He's not a starter, and that's the problem. It sickens me, man. That's the problem. It it I, I, it sickens I, me. I, I think here's the issue with uh, trading Kimba Walker right now. Uh, his contract. He's unrestricted after the 2019 season. So if anyone were to take him. First of all, they would have to give up an all-star caliber type person. And you're not guaranteed that Kim is going to resign with you, uh, you know, after next season. So that's a huge risk. So I don't think they'll be able to trade him, to be honest with you. I think uh, now the issue becomes after the next year, yeah, Kim is saying all the right things. He's He's professional. If they're still not – if they're still playing below average – does he resign? Even if you, because he's unrestricted. He's unrestricted next year. He is unrestricted, but the Hornets do have his bird rights, which mean that they can pay him more than any other team. Correct. Like they, they can pay him the 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 max max. Like other teams can pay. I don't I, I don't have the exact numbers. Um, you know, other teams can pay him four years x amount of dollars. Mm-hmm. The Hornets can pay him five years for you know more money. Um, uh, give him an extra year on his contract. So, I mean, I, I don't see Kimba moving. I mean, like, I unless know, they bro. bring – I mean – I don't know, bro. My my thing is you have to draft better, man. You have to draft better. You know, you have to draft better. Mm-hmm. I mean, Frank Kaminsky's taking forever to come around. I mean, he's been playing better lately, but, I mean, you say that every three months. Mm-hmm. Um, MKG was a number two pick mm-hmm. after Anthony Davis. Really? Really? I mean, I, they talk about revisionist history, and at the time everybody was saying that, you know, MKG was the second best player. But no, he wasn't. I mean, we could have had Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal was in that same draft. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to draft better and you have to develop better. Now, what I'm hoping is on the horizon, we got Dwayne Bacon and Malik Monk. I'm thinking, like, if, if we can um, if, if we can develop those guys, 
that could be a bright future. But I I just I just don't know, man. Like the 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 whole reason why we're in the Hornets, I mean, are in the situation that they're in is because they draft horribly. Yeah. Nick, I mean Nick, uh Kimber Walker has been the only draft pick in my eyes that has really panned out. Mm-hmm. Cuz in that same draft of Kimber, two spots before Kimber, you chose Biombo. Mhm. Mhm. <laughs> and I'm just going to leave that Biombo. I'm just going to leave it there. I'm not and and he plays for who? What Orlando now? I don't know. Like he's been around a couple teams. Like Bismack. It's disgusting, man. His name is Bismack. It's really disgusting, man. <laughs> it, it really is. They I mean, I still so watch they, him. So so will they make the playoffs? You said yes. This year. This year. Are you <sighs> saying yes? It's kind of like the Super Bowl, man. Like I have thoughts and then I have hopes. You know right. what I'm saying? Of course. My hopes are that they come I mean, because the East is weak. The East is, is weak. Um, you know, everyone thought that Washington might be the third best team, but they're kind of falling apart. Mm-hmm. John Wall is out for a couple of weeks with mm-hmm. the injury. Um, Toronto's playing real well. I, I don't believe in Boston. All these people talking about how great Boston is. I don't believe in Boston. I mean, they're a good team, um, but, I mean, I feel like if you get in a series with them that they can be beaten by a lower a lower seeded team. So I don't right. I don't think they're like the Warriors like, you know, I don't think they're like a 1-8 matchup. Whoever gets the Warriors in the first round, it's probably going to be a sweep or a five game series. So right now the Hornets are in the third spot if the playoffs were to uh uh start today. Um You know, they're, I mean, out, excuse they're me, outside. Excuse me, 11 spot. 11, 11 spot. spot. Excuse okay. me, excuse so me, who who spot. who's right in front of them right? So now? we have the Knicks in front of them, the Pistons who we're going to talk a little bit about before we wrap this up. Uh, they're in a nice spot, but I don't see them staying in a nice spot for too long. They're definitely going to shoot up. Uh, and then you have the Sixers in the eighth, uh, the Pacers in the seventh, the Bucks in the sixth, the Heat in the fifth, the Wizards in the fourth, the Cavs in the third, Raptors in the second, and, and uh, the Celtics are the number one team. So here's my thing. Uh, any of the guys lower than them, the Bulls, the Magic, the Hawks, the Nets, uh, I don't see them, you know, uh, doing too much as far as uh, uh, moving too far in the standings. Uh, you know, uh, the Knicks at the number 10 spot, I think uh, that's probably about the highest that I see the Hornets getting is in that 10 spot. I, I'm sorry, I just don't see them uh, them uh, making the pl- uh, playoffs this year with this current team without um, – Without uh, without making any any trades or any moves, which is probably not going to happen. Well, no, I agree with you. That's why I said I have, you know, you asked me if they're going to make the playoffs or not. Um, my hope is that they do, mm-hmm. but realistically, I mean, at twenty two and twenty nine, basically halfway through the season, I mean, it's tough. It's tough because um, those teams that you just went over. I mean, they're they're decent teams. Um, you know, the Pistons just picked up Blake Griffin. I mean, we'll see how that works. I mean, I don't really know how that's gonna work with Andre Drummond. I mean, we'll see. Um, the Knicks. I mean, I, it's poor. I know Porzingis was out for a while. Is he back now? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So mm-hmm. I mean, they have Porzingis. They have a pretty good team. Um, I mean, all those teams are decent. Um, I mean, I really feel like the Hornets, man, they have enough talent to move up and maybe get to a seventh spot um, or a seventh, maybe sixth spot. Um, is it going to happen, though? Probably not, to be realistic like you've been saying. <laughs> Probably not. Um, uh, I, I just think it's been a lost season, man. I think Batum getting hurt early in the season – I think Batum getting hurt early in the season, uh, that really threw everything off, and um, they're just in an uphill battle now. I mean, being a, a Charlotte, North Carolina guy, you know, I hope they make the playoffs, uh, but it's going to be an uphill battle. It really yeah. is. It really yeah. is. But I do, I do think that Kimba – it's going to be interesting to see what happens when his contract is up, whether or not he makes the effort to try to stay here or not or look to see what other options he has. but I think I that's d- going to be the story. I don't think they're going to tr- trade him. I don't think that they have the pieces to trade him to get what they want in return. 
Uh, and I don't think another team is really willing to take that risk at this point. I don't think so either. I, I don't think I think he's safe through the trade deadline and through the season, and then we'll just have to see what happens moving forward with his contract. So um, that's our Hornets talk for today. Uh, we'll definitely be back at you at you again with more Hornets and local basketball, football, sports talk. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We yeah, enjoyed. Yeah, yeah. Speaking with you today, we had a great time. <laughs> Mad Dog over here, the Chief, and um, you all and everyone, you know, have a great day. Yeah, and yeah. we will be speaking Super with Bowl, you soon. Super Bowl, Super Bowl, Super <laughs> Bowl. Enjoy, you got some it, Super Bowl plans. enjoy your you got Super, Bowl Super Bowl plans, Chief. Festivities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to, uh, you know, the wife and I are going to. Throw a little Super Bowl shindig, have okay. some people over, you, you know, know enjoy the festivities. You know, I'm you know I probably should have took Monday off, but I didn't, so we'll see how that works out. But uh, <laughs> No days off. No days off. <laughs> so, everyone, uh, enjoy the Super Bowl. We'll be back to speak with you real soon. And uh, we're going to get out of here. You all have a great day. Peace. Cause I got a really big team and they need some really big rings. They need some really nice things. Better be coming with no strings. Better be coming with no strings. We need some really nice things. We need some really big rings. I got a really big team. I got a really big team. They need some really big rings. They need some really nice